Should we buy or sell gold? First off, read this disclaimer very carefully and do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. We go to natural resources and we do find precious metals here. Here is gold, 4% from the 52 week low, 19% away from the highs. Uh, one would expect gold to perform much better in a time of turmoil. Um, but we haven't seen that so far. Um, however, we are seeing some kind of low-ish behavior in gold. Uh, the problem is that we are still below the 200 week moving average in red. But when we look here at the last candlesticks uh, over, you know, over a month, this level seems to just be very buyable. The bulls did just come back there uh, to buy. As such, there is a bit of a floor. Uh, this week we saw a strong rally. And uh, when we go to the daily data points, and we do see that this green 50 day moving average is a pretty big deal for this uh, sell off. Uh, pretty shortable here as well. And we did test uh, that resistance level this week. Um, however, we are also at a very key support level. We have a one, two, three. So this is a triple bottom. Uh, and that is a pretty strong position uh, to test, uh, uh, you know, the green 50 daily moving average resistance. Uh, when we look here at the weekly data points and you know, the RSI and PPO, we are still very low. So there's a lot more fuel left in uh, the bull rally. On the daily data points, uh, we are, you know, at 54 RSI. Uh, and also still below previous fail levels. So they're, they're, the bulls don't, they don't really have any excuse not to just push above the green 50 day. So overall, this is definitely uh, the most interesting test of the green 50 day in a long time. So we are at 50 daily moving average resistance. I will give the bears a minus one, but that is a very, very weak score given that we are at the key, uh, at the key resistance level. There's other factors here on the technicals that strongly suggest that gold now has an opportunity to push through resistance. And it's a big deal resistance as well. And that can become self-reinforcing for the bulls. Let's look at the seasonality for gold. Uh, to the right, we have green the last five years, red the last 10 years, blue last seven years. So into 18-ish of November, we usually see a bit more weakness for gold, but then we do get some significant strength. To the left, yeah, over the last five years, November is not a strong month, but December is pretty darn strong. Uh, the last 10 years. Uh, so November, it is a messy month because it is weak. However, December is a very strong and January is very strong. And we do see here to the right that the weakness of November usually ends around the, tw the 20th. When we go out into the last 20 years, from September into January, the seasonality gets more and more bullish for gold. Uh, so given that there usually is more weakness in November and we are still in November, I must give this one slightly to the bears. However, there, there's also so much bullish stuff on the horizon that I will give the bulls a three. Uh, in terms of the fundamentals, I will give gold a strong seven here. Uh, the issue, though, is that even though the fundamentals of gold very, very much, much bullish, the powers that be are able to manipulate the gold price. And investing in gold and silver based on fundamentals has historically been very dangerous. But yes, the, the, it's hard to give anything below a 7 for gold. Let's look at relative performance. We start with the long-term uh, picture. There is a 42% positive correlation with the S&P 500, 74, 
well, 75% positive with silver, 78% with GDX, the gold miner CTF, and you have 65% with the junior gold miners. So that it is a strong correlation, but not as strong as one might expect. Daily data points, 73% with S&P 500, 91% with silver, 95% with the GDX and 95% basically the identical correlation with the GDXJ. So the strongest uh, correlation we do get is with the GDX. Uh, the GDX is another way to invest in gold uh, where you get bigger moves. So here is the GDX. Uh, it's emerging from a low level, a potentially pretty substantial upside. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting developments here. The purple 20 week moving average is definitively a resistance level. The blue 100 today is a key resistance level. And we are, uh, we are forming a very, very much interesting rounding bottom pattern that uh, is pretty bullish. Looking at RSI and the PPOs on the weeklies still at a very low level. So there should be more upside on the dailies. Yeah. Uh, the bulls have more fuel in the tank. Oh, here is gold versus GDX. Uh, we do see that gold substantially outperformed the GDX for some time, but then we pushed into a high RSI level that usually leads to a reversion, and that reversion is ongoing. We see that dur during previous major reversions in these two pairs, well, this pair, this pair uh, we occasionally explore the, um, so what level on RSI is this? Yeah, the 40-ish level on RSI, you go all the way down there or even the, into oversold territory. So basically, uh, we could see more underperformance from gold, which means that it could be a good idea to rather be exposed to the GDX. That is definitively uh something to to um, to consider uh looking here at the daily data points we usually see a bit more strength uh, outperformance from gold but then it starts to underperform a bit then outperform but then underperform it's a bit messy yes we end up with a 2.8 in favor of the bulls we are at 50 daily moving average resistance but given the other data here there is reason to expect a, a breakout. Uh, we have time left, so let's run through uh, other uh, ways of uh, getting out of the fiat money system. Uh, let's look at SLV, which is the silver ETF. Uh, in this case, we are below uh, the 200 week moving average. It's a big deal, uh, resistance level. On the dailies, we have a rounding bottom formation here as well. Now let's look at uh, RSI and PPO. More left on in the tank on the weekly RSI and PPO. On the dailies, yeah, we are at the previous fail level. So, so this rally here, it failed at the current RSI and PPO level. Um, so there's that. But yeah. yeah, this is the third time we are testing. Well, we are very close to testing uh, the 200 week moving average. Uh, so it, this is an interesting opportunity here for silver and the silver uh, bulls. Let's look at Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin had a very interesting move. It's not as apparent on, on the weeklies. But on the dailies, it's pretty apparent because we have struggled ever since uh, April of this year. We have languished below the blue 100 day moving average. We tried, we fail, try, fail. But then we try, 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 try. And on the 4th of November, we had a clear breakout and follow through today. And this is definitively very interesting stuff for Bitcoin because when Bitcoin forms a low, there can be very substantial upside. 
just for us to test uh, the previous highs, it would mean yeah, a pretty healthy 222% upside. That's that's decent. A lot of fuel and potential left on weekly RSI and PPL. On the daily data points, yeah, I mean, given that we have a breakout, we can establish higher levels on RSI and the PPOs. Because during previous uptrends, we have been substantially higher on those indicators. So definitively, this is uh, this is good news for Bitcoin. And um, next on the list, um, while we are on the topic of getting outside of uh, the system, here is a Rumble. It's uh, an alternative to. Uh, uh, to uh, the major uh, video uh, platforms. Uh, we have seen a pretty strong rally now. Um, let's go to the dailies. Yeah, from this low, we have an 82% rally. So, mm. well, if long term, there could be, of course, more upside, but uh, the big move has happened. Uh, let's look at uh, Tesla. Uh, Elon Musk has definitively been in the news now due to the completion of the acquisition of Twitter. Uh, there's been a major backlash from advertisers. More specifically, the major advertisers. Um, unsurprisingly, the major advertisers, uh, they are you know, into status quo. They do not like uh, new stuff, uh, new ideologies uh, rising uh, forth, and so they are boycotting Twitter because they think it will be um, just more chaotic, uh, that it will be a breeding, breeding ground for completely new ideologies in the religious, political realm, cultural realm. And to a large extent, you know, the big incumbent advertisers, they have shaped uh, the current culture. So they will obviously be threatened by uh, what Twitter could become. Here is another stock price for Tesla. We are at horizontal support. Uh, let's look here at the dailies. Yeah, uh, support here on the, the daily data points. While we talk about Tesla, let's have a bit of a look at Ford. Ford is a huge fan of the red 200 week moving average. It is extremely viable, almost like printing money. It works until it doesn't. That's the thing. But yeah, another strong rally from that moving average. Looking at the daily data points. Yeah, we are breaking out, breaking out above the blue 100 day moving average resistance. Uh, the red 200 today, it's above us, but uh, still some distance away. Here is a Lockheed Martin, uh, a very bullish move. Uh, this is a military company, and when they have very big moves, it's uh, a bit of a, a bit of an omen. So what does this mean? Okay, let's look at High II. That is Huntington Ingalls Industries. They produce warships. Also in an uptrend, let's look at the GDD, that general dynamics, you know, tanks and the, the likes. Oh, we have a bit of a breakout here. So what does that mean? Hmm. Yeah, given the price action in some of these defense stocks, uh, yeah, so they suggest that this is not the, the worst time to consider uh, gold and silver. I, in terms of gold, and uh, versus silver, I would say go for gold, simply because uh, gold has stood the test of test of time, and silver is considered to be a sort of like the poor man's gold. So if you want to hold on to the precious metal that the powers that be are holding on to, that they will defend with military force, that is gold. It simply is not silver. And if you get have to get out of Dodge, it is way easier to transport massive wealth in gold versus silver. The reason why people like silver is because, of, of course, for the same sum, you can get a lot more of the stuff. 
So you can have a nice pile of uh, silver, but the same value in gold is going to look more minuscule. In terms of hiding gold, you know, storing uh, wealth, uh, the smart trick is to hide in places no one would ever uh, consider, you know, stealing. There are actually toilets and toilet brushes with secret compartments. Because if someone breaks into your home and looking for your gold, they will definitively not start to uh, fondle your toilet brush, as an example. Another place could be like behind your oven. That's also like a place that's associated with everything else but value.